This is the kind of camera that makes everyone smile. It's satisfying to use like an old school flip phone. But what about this $30 camera from 2004 makes it special? And does the CCD sensor really produce film-like images? Starting with the appearance of this camera, it is quite a peculiar thing. At first glance, the Canon PowerShot S60 is very, very narrow. Never call the bat narrow. It's very, very wide and very, very short. Sorry, sorry. It's very, very wide and very, very short. Far away from the Canon PowerShot G line of more high-end cameras, and other Canon compacts like the Ixus line, this S60 is a much different design. When I first held this camera, I thought because of the width and kind of empty space on the back of the camera, it would be uncomfortable to use. But I was pleasantly surprised, the layout of the camera, once you actually start using it, makes a lot of sense. Especially the lens cover that actually activates the camera like an old school flip phone. Amazing. Then on the back of the camera, we have our LCD screen that is all the way to the left, leaving quite a lot of space over the right for a kind of flat but useful thumb grip. And this actually means that the excess of the body is great to grip with and also kind of to fidget with while you're walking along on the street ready to shoot. The layout of the back of the camera would feel quite normal when put aside other compact cameras, but because of the small LCD screen and then the much wider length of the body itself, it does kind of feel like we've got a lot of big buttons versus kind of a smart layout of buttons. But alongside our screen, we have our D-pad, our play button, the print button that we for some reason need, display, menu, and then also our zoom rocker that is actually very useful just beside the mode dial and in front of the shutter button. But you may also notice we do not have any physical dials to be able to change our settings with. All of this is actually done using the D-pad, so the actual directional arrows on the back of the camera. Left and right control your shutter speed in manual mode, and up and down control your f-stop. We do, however, have dedicated buttons for things like metering, and oddly, a button just for printing your images, so you can plug in and print straight away directly from your camera. 2004 was a weird time, I think. Quick reminder, do not forget about the Lumix GX1 giveaway. I'm going to be announcing the rules of how to win this camera for free in my new video on June 22nd. So subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the rules on how to win a free camera setup. I have not mentioned where the ISO lives and that actually lives within the function menu. And the function menu is the classic Canon function menu that you'll recognize from all modern Canon cameras. Within the function menu on this camera, we do have things like white balance, like drive modes. We also have ISO selection, our creative picture styles, bracketing, flash output, and then JPEG compression and raw selection. Because the PowerShot line is aimed at the kind of prosumer enthusiast photographer, much like the G9, which I think is a overall better equipped older CCD camera. This S60 still has a lot of those great features. So we still have loads of scene modes, we have video mode, we have custom mode. But it's important to remember that when this camera came out, it cost $500, which today accounting for inflation is $805.33, which is really quite a lot. However, this S60 that I bought on eBay secondhand cost me £25, including postage, which is about $30. So, this 28mm lens means that our street photography can be up close and personal in a busy street. Well, I kind of wish that was the case. The autofocus that we have here is actually quite slow. Sometimes it's quite snappy, but in a lot of situations, waiting for the green confirmation of your autofocus point can take a second or two. So sometimes I fire when it's actually still yellow and hasn't quite decided. Luckily you can fire before it confirms, but if you are waiting for it to confirm, sometimes you may miss whatever's about to happen. But despite the autofocus problems, I've still managed to get quite a few shots that I like, and I think a lot of that is luckily down to the sensor. The sensor we have inside the PowerShot S60 is a 5 megapixel CCD sensor. Specifically, it's actually a 5.04 megapixel. 
The color science for this sensor is, of course, Canon color. There's always the debate around how much influence do CCD sensors have on the image and how much is it just the manufacturer's color profiles that they've baked into the sensor in their software. But I think between this and the G9 that are both Canon color science CCD sensors, there is a consistent theme here. Sadly, a letdown here on the back of the camera in terms of displaying images is that the LCD, on top of being quite small, is also fairly inaccurate. The JPEGs you open on your computer will look a little bit different, a little bit less warm and a little bit less saturated than you will see on the back of the camera. While we're on the topic of importing your images, this also uses a compact flash card compared to an SD card, which is not the end of the world, but if you do not already have a compact flash card reader, you will need to pick one up if you plan to use cameras from about this age. The colours from the JPEGs on this camera, for me, feel quite satisfying immediately when you view them in camera and almost as satisfying when you get them onto your computer. My main issue here that I hinted on earlier is the LCD screen on the back of the camera. It's small. In low light, like this room here, it's quite reliable, but sadly, in bright daylight situations, it is very unreliable. The max brightness of the screen does not compete with daylight at all, which is to be expected of an LCD from 19 years ago. But it is a bit of a letdown when you're trying to manual control on a bright sunny day. Inside, very confident in terms of getting a good exposure, but outside, not really. Embarrassingly, until this week, I was convinced that for some reason, my camera would not select raw shooting from the function menu. The raw shooting mode lives underneath the function menu alongside the compression settings for the JPEG modes. And when you select any of the JPEG modes, you simply hover over them and you press the set button and then that compression is set. But when you go onto the raw mode, you could press raw and nothing would happen and then you would power off the camera, come back, and it was back to JPEG again. However, it turns out, luckily, thanks to Ototoro from my Discord server, the Megapixels Discord server, they suggested that actually select RAW and then just sort of exit the function menu by pressing function menu again, and then that actually confirmed selecting the RAW mode, and then even when I turn it off and turn it back on again, it is there. So I've only been shooting RAW with this camera for the last couple of days, the majority of the images you're seeing in this video are JPEGs, and then there's a few RAWs. So, RAWs aside, what are the JPEGs like directly out of this camera? Well, they have a 5.04 megapixel resolution, which pixel by pixel gives us a 2592 by a 1944 resolution. And looking at this resolution, you can see that it surpasses HD video, but it falls short of 4K. But that's quite a respectable amount of resolution for anyone that is just posting on social media to be displayed on phones. This lower resolution should not discourage you from picking up an old compact camera like this. Five megapixels is plenty enough. With the resolution that we have from this camera, sharing on social media is not a problem. And actually when you view your images large on a desktop as well, you realize just how big modern files are of 20, 30 megapixel images. And when you see a five megapixel, a lot of the time you think, well, as long as I don't crop, this is perfectly fine. And for me, I rarely crop heavily. And then printing wise, you can still get away with quite large prints, surprisingly. So you can print something like a 12 by 16 inch print, which for metric is 30 by 40 centimeters. Now, in terms of those JPEGs that you might print if you weren't shooting raw, what can you actually do to get a nice look inside the camera? Well, we have our creative effect. And inside our creative effect, we have contrast that we can move either down by two or up by two. Then we have sharpness with the same parameters and then saturation with the same parameters. However, unlike the Canon PowerShot G9, we do not have the ability to actually shift our RGB channels, our red, green, and blue channels. We only have the ability for these kind of blanket corrections. Alongside our basic creative controls like sharpness, contrast, and saturation, we also have the ability to change our white balance. We can't change our white balance manually, as in by a Kelvin value. We do actually have quite a handy custom white balance set if you wanna get perfect white balance, but if you're trying to go for a specific baked in JPEG look, then you actually can select from different white balance options like daylight, cloudy, tungsten, fluorescent, etc. 
I have mainly been using it on Cloudy, as you'll remember from my trash camera video, getting the Fuji look in the Canon G9. To create that superior extra 400 look, I chose the Cloudy white balance option, and actually I found that's been quite a pleasing look for me straight out of camera when shooting JPEGs on old CCD sensors. So the big question about these older digital cameras and the reason why they've kind of become popular again in the last year or so is are these CCD sensor digital cameras from the mid 2000s actually producing film like images? I think when you shoot with a CCD camera like this, there is this kind of retro throwback to the shooting experience, to the images you get out of the camera, to kind of like the technical limitations that all add towards feeling a bit more like shooting analog film. The whole slide to activate the camera, for me, as well as feeling like a flip phone, feels like my compact film camera from Olympus that activates by sliding open the lens cover as well. Um, so I think if you're used to shooting an old compact film camera like this, like a full auto film camera, then you're gonna have a great time with an old CCD camera like this as well. But I don't know about you, I'm not really satisfied with that answer. I think there is a debate to be had here between CCD sensors, modern CMOS sensors, and 35 millimeter film, like this Lomography 800 color film. So in next week's video, we're going to be doing exactly that. We're gonna be directly comparing images from this G9, from this S60, with Lomography 800 color film. In that video, we'll assess the images that come out of this S60, out of this G9, and we'll be comparing them with color film from Lomography shot on my Minolta. And that'll be quite interesting to see the sort of images you can get out of cheap, older digital cameras. And if you're interested in interchangeable lens, cheap, older digital cameras, check out this video here on a camera that you can get for $300 today, interchangeable, cheap lenses that is very fun to use for street photography.